Explore the deep ocean with Seabed 2030. We're on a mission to map every part of the ocean floor by 2030. Welcome to Earth Insider, where we delve into the depths of science and explore the wonders of our world. Don't miss out on our latest updates. Subscribe to our journey and like our videos as we use cool technology to discover new things about the ocean. Let's learn together and make the world a better place. The ocean instills fear, yet our maps of its depths are shockingly inadequate. While platforms like Google Maps might suggest comprehensive knowledge, the truth is far from it. Our understanding of the ocean floor pales in comparison to our knowledge of Mars surface. Consider this, we've mapped Mars with a resolution of five meters per pixel, while our understanding of Earth's land reaches about 30 centimeters. In stark contrast, most of our ocean mapping offers a mere 1.5 kilometers resolution, a staggering 300 times less detailed. This deficiency poses significant challenges given our heavy reliance on the ocean, from laying cables for internet connectivity to conducting warfare, obtaining sustenance, and facilitating global trade. Despite water covering 71% of the Earth's surface, our insight into its depths remains surprisingly limited. But why is this the case, given our intellectual capabilities? The answer lies in the inherent difficulty of representing water graphically, whether on Mars or Earth's surface. We can take pictures, but light doesn't get to the ocean floor, so we need other ways. And the good news is that we're developing that tech right now. There is a terrifying, incredible alien world right there on our own planet. And finally, we're using technology to see it more clearly. In this video, we're going deep with some help from a friend to show you how we're mapping the ocean, the surprising things that we found in the depths, and why this new technology could be huge if true. Map the ocean floor. Mapped the ocean floor, not the ocean floor that nobody has ever met before. Piece together a complete map of all the world's seabed. Oh my god, this one's freaking gorgeous and nobody really knows quite what's down the download. Mapping our oceans is shockingly hard, largely because they're just so much deeper than most people think. Imagine that you walk off the coast into the water at 10 meters or 33 feet deep. You're already experiencing an entire additional atmosphere of pressure on your body. At 214 meters, you're passing the verified record for a human diver with no equipment, and it's quickly getting darker and colder. At 828 meters, you're the depth of the tallest building on Earth, the Burj Khalifa. And a thousand meters down, the world is unrecognizable. No light from the surface can penetrate these steps. No light. The whole rest of the way is blackness. And you're less than 10% of the way down. 1,220 meters. You're in the territory of the deepest military submarines that we know, about 3,800 meters. You've hit the Titanic. Just above it is where we think the infamous Ocean Gate submersible imploded. The pressure down here, over 350 atmospheres collapsed the faulty submersible in a thousandth of a second. For reference, in space, it would take you up to 90 seconds to die. If you ever found yourself pondering between a brief interlude in space or the profound depths of the ocean, space wins out. Unless, of course, you harbor a desire to encounter extraterrestrial life forms, in which case, opt for the ocean. Its allure is undeniable. Personally, I'm enamored with the ocean. Plunge into its depths and you'll encounter wonders beyond imagination. The deepest point on record, Challenger Deep, plunges to a staggering 10,935 meters, or roughly 6.8 miles down. Picture this. If Mount Everest were submerged upside down in the ocean, there would still be over a mile of water above it. That's about the cruising altitude of a 737 airplane. The ocean's abysmal expanses are both mesmerizing and foreboding, rendering mapping an exceptionally daunting task. With over 70% of the Earth's surface covered by water, much of it is inaccessible to human exploration. The ocean remains a realm of mystery and marvel. It's the last unknown place on Earth. When I look at Google Maps, I can see what looks like a topography of the entire ocean. 
But if we haven't mapped the ocean in detail, what am I actually looking at? We don't have good maps of the global seabed. What quite a lot of those maps have been derived from is using satellite gravity data. That's Steve Hall, marine scientist and ocean mapping expert. He told me that because light can't penetrate past a certain distance, satellites use a method that totally blows my mind and has changed how I'm going to look at the ocean forever. Okay, here goes. The surface of the ocean isn't flat. It is ever so slightly the shape of what's below it. Yeah, the gravitational field of the Earth isn't exactly constant. So if there's a deep trench, there will be ever such a slight dip down in the sea surface above it. If there's a mountain, there will be ever such a tiny bulge to create some of the topography that you see on Google Maps. We're using satellites to send radar pulses down to the surface of the Earth, measure the height of the water in different places, and then estimate the shape of the ocean floor. The next time that you take a look out across the water, just take a second to appreciate how absolutely bananas this is. But this radar and the ocean surface technique doesn't give us a very precise view of the seabed. We still need to fill in a lot of detail. So you're looking at a pretty good approximation of what the shape of the seafloor is like, and a lot of that has been put together by good quality but educated guesswork. For example, see these bumps and ridges right here? We know that those are underwater mountains, but if you try and zoom in, it gets blurry. Now back to that other way of mapping the ocean. In 1913, a German investor created a device that could send acoustic waves into the water and record the time that it took for them to bounce back. You've heard of this? This is sonar. But it wasn't until the 1940s that a woman named Marie Tharp turned those sonar measures into maps. Those maps showed mountains and valleys and all kinds of things that we'd never seen before. They were some of, if not the first ocean floor maps ever created. And then you do that with enough regions of the ocean, and finally you put them all together and you start to get something like a real map. At first, it was still pretty crude, like here's some of the early versions of what the ocean map looked like. This is one of the first, if not the first published map of the ocean floor from 1957. This is one of the most beautiful maps I've ever seen. This one from 1977 is considered a work of art. I mean, look at it. As beautiful as all of this is, a lot of this was like filling in the blanks. And that's a problem if you're trying to get a, like, hyper-realistic map of the ocean. So they needed a better way. I just love these. Marie Tharp's maps were so beautiful, but like Johnny showed, there were big parts that they had to essentially make up. Marie Tharp was using data from those narrow lines of sonar from old shipping routes. Today, we still use sonar to map the ocean floor. But instead of sending a few beams down, sonar devices send thousands in a fan that can span several kilometers. This is a really big deal because it makes it possible to map much larger areas at a time. You remember this blurry part of the map. Researchers just gathered sonar data for that part of the ocean, and now we can see it in much, much more detail. But we still haven't done that for most of the ocean, and we need to step it up in part to better navigate the deep ocean to do things like lay internet cables, but also to save lives by better predicting tsunamis and storms and sea level rise, or to use the ocean for new kinds of renewable energy, or because in a crisis, you really need a good map in a whole new mountain ranges and valleys. And things were discovered in the search for MH370 that never showed up on a map. People thought, well, it should be really obvious that there's a plane on the bottom because it must just be a flat, boring surface. It turned out to be, you know, deep ravines and crags and mountain peaks where you can easily hide a Boeing 777. Enter an international group of ocean avengers named Seabed 2030. The goal of Seabed 2030 is to map the entire ocean floor in detail by 2030. So instead of a resolution of 1.5 kilometers, they're trying to get even with the most unknown areas mapped down to a resolution of 800 meters and higher traffic areas mapped down to only a few meters. Nobody's done this before, but Seabed 2030 is different in two key ways. First, they're getting data from new sources. Basically, everybody from oil and gas companies to environmental groups to militaries with some caveats. The Russians are never going to give us their high-resolution map of the approaches to Murmansk Harbor, and the Chinese aren't going to do the same with their approaches to Qingdao. 
and we wouldn't expect them to. But what we would expect them to do is if they're able to say, we're willing to let you have a map which is accurate to maybe 100 meters, and that's great. It's still giving us a much more detailed map than presently exists. Next, Seabed 2030 is harnessing data from state-of-the-art ocean technology utilized by numerous organizations. Currently, two developments are particularly captivating. Firstly, there's what I like to call the rise of the robots. Unmanned underwater vehicles, or autonomous underwater vehicles, are revolutionizing exploration of underwater marine environments. Picture it as akin to mowing the lawn underwater. These robotic ships navigate back and forth methodically, collecting data that would be tedious for human crews to gather. Yet, for the robots, it's all in a day's work. You simply assign them a section of ocean to explore, and off they go. Alongside this robotic fleet, I anticipate advancements in their intelligence, enabling them to identify and investigate intriguing phenomena with greater precision. The progress is tangible. Initially, when the project commenced, detailed maps covered only 6% of the ocean floor. Now, that figure stands at 25%, signaling significant strides. However, concerns linger regarding the implications of these comprehensive maps. They think that better data might mean destruction if we find something valuable like minerals to mine. But as Steve put it, the lack of map is not the barrier to any of those people going out there and doing mining. You can't manage what you haven't measured. And a map, whether it's a map of the land or a map of the seabed, it kind of puts you all on a level playing field, saying that we don't want information because we're afraid of what we'll do with it. That's not what helps people. It's our responsibility to use what we learn wisely. I think that we can't be afraid of knowledge for fear of what we'll do with it. Humanity's ability to map our environment has always been our first step to understanding it and hopefully using it for the better. Right now, we're exploring one of the last unknown places on our planet. That's awesome to be able to do together as a species. I think it's kind of like I think about the International Space Station. Countries at odds over all kinds of political ideologies, working together for the sake of exploration and science. It's inspiring. The ocean is terrifying and beautiful and immense. And we are these hairless monkeys incapable of diving by ourselves 1% of the way down, who somehow, through our technology and our curiosity and our grit over hundreds of years, are finally now being able to see and be a part of a different world. I can't wait to see not just what it looks like and what we learn, but what we build with that knowledge to continue to push our world forward. That would be truly huge. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on future videos.